Mickey D from Motorhead here. You're watching Hollywood music. Stay tuned. It's going to be a lot of music, hopefully, so especially Motorhead. Hey, this is Groovy with Hollywood Music. I'm here with Mickey D from Motorhead at the Denver Mayhem Festival. How's it going, man? Yeah, we made it up here, and this time we're going to try to do the show, you know. Perfect. We had to cancel uh, on the Gigantor. Mm. Denver. Lemmy lost his voice completely. We were looking for it for about 24 hours. We couldn't find it. So now we were pretty screwed. His his voice was shut down. Really? Yeah, it was bad down in Albuquerque, but we did the trip up to Denver to try to, uh, you know, you never know. I mean, you could be all right the next day maybe, but, but it, it was just worse. And then we went to Dallas and, and gave that a shot, but from there on we went home. <laughs> He was gone. Really? I mean, how long did it take him for to recover fully? I think the doctor said he wasn't really uh, supposed to speak even for the first week. And for the second week, he had to be very careful. So really? about two, two or three weeks, he was, uh, yeah, he was out. That's brutal. It could have been a virus or something that got stuck on his windpipe, you know. Uh, I don't know much about it, but right. he, he, from one day to the other, he couldn't even breathe or talk, so it was bad. That's crazy. Now, but this mayhem, I mean, it's, this is the highest attended mayhem yet. I mean, that's, how does that feel? That's got to be awesome. Yeah, it's good. You know, we, we had such long drives uh, this first week, week and a half here. Mm -hmm. It's been uh, long drives uh, between the cities, so we haven't really been able to hang too much you know because mm -hmm. everybody's just playing and and hit the road but it's a good good bunch of bands you know and uh i'm looking forward to start looking at some of the bands because <laughs> we we just been taken off really you know really really just that busy yeah wow now where are you guys going after mayhem uh we go back to europe and uh rest up for a month or so mm -hmm. and then uh, we might start our continue with a new album okay. that is not coming out this year but we're gonna try to finish it this year i did read some press releases that you are working on this underway what would like the vibe be of the new songs uh, i i don't know to tell you the truth we we wrote some stuff but uh, with motorhead we never really have a plan on where to go with the album we we really write very spontaneous and um uh, spare of the moment because that seems to work for us you know mm -hmm. um six months later it's old really but but that also makes us move forward I in a very true way somehow you know we, we tried the the traditional writing demoing go back to it uh, you know adjusting rearranging and you know it just it, it was just not good for us it, it didn't work it came out songs that I didn't think was really motorhead from the heart for some way, you know. It, it, it just didn't work. Right, so I mean, you're, you're a band that just, it has to be spontaneous. It just I think so. I mean, I, I never worked like this in my entire life with any other band that I've played with or uh, the stuff I do outside motorhead as well. It's, it's very unique and... Um, I don't say I prefer this way, but with this band I do, you know, because it seems to work. Do you guys, I mean, ride on the road or do you have to be not moving? No, we're not riding on the road. It's too, we're too busy, you That's know. Uh, yeah, we can come up with some riffs and small ideas, but we don't sit down and, and try to create songs, no. Uh, now, do you use a different kit for touring and different for recording or are they the same one? They're the same ones. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Um, I tune them differently and use a little bit different setup, mm -hmm. um, less of everything really, uh, for studio. And uh, but but it's the same drums. And sometimes you can experiment a little bit with with di different drums sound better in the studio or not. But mm -hmm. it's the same kit. Very cool. Is there anything uh, coming up tour wise or anything else that you can talk about that's not? Uh Top secret? Yeah, well, the big European tour, as always, uh, kicks off in end of October, you know, and goes up to to Christmas, and uh, that's the same one we do. 
And this year we have Anthrax on on tour with us. So, oh, nice. Uh, I think the ticket sales going through the roof over in Europe. So that's good. I believe that. Yeah. That's no, awesome. It's always great band, great friends. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that one too. So we don't seem to get rid of these bastards, you know. But uh, it's it's uh, they toured with us before over there, so it's it's a good package. Nice. All right, man. Um, there's a couple of. Yeah, we do actually. I gotta tell, we do have the live DVD coming out. Ooh, tell me about Part that. two. Well, it's the. We released last year. Was it? Was it the year before that? Um, Everything further than every place else. I think mm -hmm. it's called. Title from hell. I, I kind of forgot about. It. But I'm sure that's it. part two is coming out with the shows from Wacken, in Germany, and Rock in Rio, mm. and a third one that. I don't remember where that one was from, but <laughs> it's just a few songs from that one anyway. And that's coming out. That's one of the reasons why we didn't want to release a record this year. Okay. That makes uh, sense. We moved the studio album till next year, you know. Nice. Nice. And it's going to be called, uh, actually, I don't know. <laughs> it's not going to be called that. But that's the weirdest uh, name ever. No, it's gonna, we, we have a little twist to this one. And I forgot what it was uh, because we had three or four different options, and I don't remember exactly which. But it's going to be called uh, "The World Is Ours," I think, okay. not yours. The world is ours. Uh, everywhere could it be everywhere closer than everywhere else? I don't know. I, it, we had we 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 had so many things in the air, so I forgot what we decided in the end. But it's good. I remember that. Excellent. I'm stoked to see it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. There's a there's a couple of last questions. They're brutal. No last questions. There's a, they're brutal and they're horrible. Right. Oh. It's the survey questions we ask every band coming through town. Okay. Right, in your entire touring history, around the world, what's the worst thing you've ever eaten? It was when I was in the jungle, actually, uh, on the uh, on that Swedish. <coughs> I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here. Uh, so, because we were on tour, mm -hmm. that was 2010, and uh, Matt Sorum jumped in for me. I think they played Denver, or did they pass out? Anyway, they, he did three weeks for me on the U.S. tour, okay. and I was in the jungle eating fucking terrible stuff every single day. So, that being around the world touring, that was the worst. I, I had a raw big lizard, and I ate uh, a nose beetle. And, and stuff like that, and that was not very good. A nose bill, you know, the ones with two horns on top and one in the bottom, big black things. What it tastes like. Like a bug. Uh, it was very, uh, I don't know how to describe that. I, oh, I couldn't eat the, the shelling of it, of course, and but you had to like dig out the inside of it, and that was, it was bad. A lizard? A lizard tasted like chicken. <laughs> It was just like rubber, you know, it's like eating a, a an old shoe or something, you know. But I had to do it, and that was nasty. So I got I got to go with that. That's that's pretty gnarly. Actually, one more. I have a bad one too. In Rostov, Russia, mm -hmm. I looked at the room service, and the, and this was um, a really really bad hotel to begin with because everything there, there was two nice hotels if I remember right. And this is what 15 years ago or something mm -hmm. and um, they were booked out we, we had to end up in like a two-star hotel or something it was just for the night no big deal but what i could understand on the room service was spaghetti and he looked like bolognese so i figured oh my god i was so hungry i ordered that and i got a a bowl with spaghetti all right uh -huh. but i had there was cut fish heads on top of it like oh. probably seven or eight fish heads I don't know if they were just, you know, decoration or <laughs> you were supposed to eat these things, you know. And I, I did pop them out and, and had the spaghetti, though, with a <laughs> nice little fishy taste to it. But that was pretty nasty, too. That's really nasty. Oh, that wasn't good. You've eaten some pretty gross stuff. Yeah, I have, it, you know, but most, most, most of the time it's okay. <laughs> you know, I prefer Swedish meatballs in front of all this shit anytime. <laughs> Absolutely. Definitely. All right, man, one last question. One last tri trivia survey question. One last question. All right. Trivia. You want trivia? 
All right, Matt calls for trivia. Uh -huh. the, tr the trivia question is. Yeah, he's he's been around the world. <coughs> I don't know. He, he Matt did some research. Okay. What country on the planet Earth has the largest breasted women? Oh, that's a good question. Um, largest breast. Mm. Natural or natural? Where they actually use implants? Because I was stunned to tell you the truth about. A country like Venezuela, which is fairly poor, you know, mm -hmm. and but it seems like 90% of the women have implants, mm. in so they obviously they're spending money on that. But natural breasts, uh, where could that be? Um, Wales. Oh my God! Oh shit! <laughs> 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 I I'm. I, I, no, because I tell you what, when you walk, when you walk the streets of Wales, you 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 never seen these big, you know, breasts on women, and they all seem to be very heavy loaded. You know? So they are natural, I suppose. That's that. That was my first guess. It would have been around UK. It would be Wales. And I don't That's know why problem. it's so different between Wales, England, or Scotland and Ireland, because. Uh -huh. You know, it would be like Canada, U.S., or you know, or or actually four states. How yeah. come Nevada is bigger than California, or or you know what I mean? It, it's uh, so. But Wales is, I would say that. Oh, yeah, that's, so that was the right. That's thing. completely right. That is. <laughs> I know my women. Thirty-five, what? forty bands. Nobody's gotten it right. Really? Nobody. Not well, they don't tour them. as much as I do. So. I knew you would get that. The wusses. <laughs> I'm like blown away up so uh, No, but <laughs> I thought about it and if you said implants, I would say Venezuela. Because mm. I was stunned over that a country in, they're not super, super poor, but it it's not a very wealthy country to begin with. And uh, that they're spending that mu much money on, on what I heard, plastic surgery in general, especially women. I mean, they because if you walk the streets there, you see every girl has an implant and you you would think california or maybe sweden or you know but or or parts of russia ukraine maybe but no venezuela i never seen anything like it wow more than brazil more than colombia more than argentina and wow. you know chile or whatever it, venezuela very strange huh different custom for different countries now i know where i'm going on vacation <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's, it's nice to walk around looking at, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, man. Thank you so much All for right. your time. Cool. Thanks. <laughs> this is Groovy Hollywood Music. I'm here with Mickey D from Motorhead. The Denver Mayhem. We, he gets Wales right off the bat. I'm blown away. I'm so stoked. <laughs> Cheers. I'm glad. <laughs>